As of the time we're making this video in early August, we're watching a very powerful storm front moving toward us in Maryland. Summer flying is great, but it comes with the increased chances of unforecast thunderstorms in the later afternoon. It wasn't too long ago that weather radar depictions like this one were only available to us pilots of smaller general aviation aircraft on the ground, if at all. Now though, we can use any number of tools to have a fairly up-to-date radar picture available in the cockpit. Even still, the air traffic controllers you're talking to on an IFR flight might also be able to overlay weather radar on their scopes, but not all ATC facilities have that capability. While our weather information coming from sources such as ADSB is delayed by as much as 15 minutes, controllers' weather is often up to the minute. Even onboard weather radar like we'd see in larger aircraft has limitations, such as attenuation or shadowing where some precipitation can block other larger areas of precipitation behind it. We can ask the controller something like, what are you painting ahead of us, to request their input on precipitation. ATC will say something along the lines of, Area of heavy precipitation between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, 1-5 miles. Area is 10 miles in diameter. This describes an area in front of our aircraft that looks roughly like this. Tracon sees six levels of precipitation that are interpreted into four levels to pilots as light, moderate, heavy, and extreme, whereas centers display and communicate only three levels, moderate, heavy, and extreme. Whether receiving radar weather information from a controller or source from ADS-B or elsewhere in your cockpit, always keep in mind that the radar picture is only showing areas of current precipitation. It doesn't show cloud coverage or other weather, and it can't show areas of dangerous turbulence. The FAA recommends flying no closer than 20 miles to a thunderstorm, since it could be dangerous to fly in areas that aren't even currently receiving precipitation. However, knowing these areas of precipitation is very helpful for planning a weather deviation. Let's say we're on an airway on the en route phase of this IFR flight. We have a report of the heavy precipitation we mentioned before in front of us. We'd like to fly around it, preferably to the west to get on the lee side of the system, but we can't deviate from an IFR course without permission. Approach 518 Foxtrot Tango requests 20 degrees left deviation for weather avoidance. We've made a specific request with an approximate heading to get us out of the danger, but in reality, this is where we'll be working as a team with the controller. It may not be easy to eyeball a degree of deviation which will keep us safe, and ATC may or may not want to know how long we intend to deviate for. Also notice that we've made a request. While it's true that FAR 91.3 grants final authority to the pilot in command for safety of flight, we should anticipate this deviation far enough in advance that a request should be sufficient, not a unilateral action followed by us just advising ATC after the fact. We're probably not the only ones in the area changing our plans, and we want to let ATC accommodate everyone, so it's important to plan these deviations early. ATC may respond with, left deviation approved, maintain 6,000 feet, expect to rejoin the airway in 30 miles. They may also tell you to expect to rejoin the airway at a fix or waypoint along the route. If it's not too busy, they'll more than likely just say to advise them when you're able to rejoin. Notice the keywords, when able, which means just that, when you're able to safely rejoin. GA pilots have been burned in the past by simply misunderstanding this instruction and turning too early into bad weather, which sometimes resulted in a fatal outcome. Things get a bit more complicated if we're flying a chartered procedure like a star or a sit around a busy airport, since we'll need to be worked in along with a number of other aircraft. Also, if a deviation puts us into another controller's sector, some extra coordination might be necessary. For all these reasons, it's important to stay on top of weather ahead and plan a diversion early. Most of the time, ATC will be able to accommodate. By saying left deviation approved, ATC has given us a fair degree of freedom in how we're going to navigate around this weather. Had they stuck with our requested 20 degree deviation, we'd be constrained by that new heading but now we can determine how best to avoid the weather as long as we stay to the left. Let's look at how to deviate from our route and stay as organized as possible in the cockpit. In a glass cockpit equipped aircraft, we can use what's called a parallel track feature. We're flying along an airway, Victor 77, from the Pioneer VOR northwest bound. Here's the route on our multi-function display. ATC gave us that heads up about weather 15 miles ahead of us with a 10 mile diameter. So in an area that looks like this, we've asked for and gotten a left deviation. Let's dial in the left deviation on our PFD, and then switch over to heading mode to make the turn. Now we can program in the deviation. 
back on the MFD, we'll push the FPL button on the side bezel to bring up the flight plan page. We'll then push menu to bring up some options. If we scroll down using the FMS knob, we see an option parallel track. We select enter and now we can set a direction. We're going left and a distance. We'll choose six miles. When we activate it, a parallel track offset six miles from the airway is now highlighted. The magenta leg is active and is pointing directly from our present position to the fix BICA, noted with a lowercase p to indicate that it's on the parallel offset. The deviation calculated is bringing us six miles of beam BICA and then following the airway parallel. We'll hold our course using heading mode. The cross track indicated on the HSI at the bottom of the PFD shows our distance from that parallel track. Once it gets closer and the needle comes alive, we'll activate nav mode so that we can intercept and follow that parallel course. Later on, once we're clear of weather, we'll let ATC know that we can resume our original course. They'll give us a heading to fly to re-intercept the airway, or they'll clear us direct to a fix along it. To re-intercept, we'll dial in the heading instructed, switch to heading mode, then on the MFD, tap FPL, scroll to the next waypoint, hit menu, then activate leg. We can arm nav mode on the autopilot, and as we get close, we'll turn left to re-intercept and continue along the way. We could have done this entire deviation without using parallel track by simply navigating around the storm cell with the original airway still active, but if you're glass cockpit equipped, this feature may help you stay organized. Sometimes it's just not enough to snake your way around weather, and you need to divert to an alternate airport. Choosing an alternate begins, of course, in the planning stage of the flight, where you'll file an alternate if required by forecast weather. It's a good idea to file an alternate you realistically anticipate using in the case of a diversion, but you're not bound to only deviate to that airport. Whether you're flying VFR or IFR, always have a mental picture of an airport or airports that you know you can safely divert to, and don't let yourself get far enough into bad weather that the only route to the alternate is right back through the muck. One last point, while airliners cruise at altitudes above most weather and so spend most of their IMC time only in the descent and climb phases, in general aviation, it's not rare to have almost an entire flight spent in the clouds. If you can help it, try to remain in visual conditions when you're deviating around weather. Radar and ATC can help identify problem areas, but there's no substitute for seeing with your own eyes and avoiding. Ask for a pyrep to see if a pilot has identified the cloud tops and see if you can request a climb above them.